It is a pleasure to follow both the Leader of the Opposition and the former future Leader of the Liberal Party <laughs> on what is one of the silliest moments I can imagine of a dissent Order. motion. Like, if this were the test of whether or not you moved dissent, we would have had a dissent motion every question time, every day, for the previous nine years. That's what we would have had. Because what their objection to is the fact that the standing order simply says you have to be relevant. That's what they're actually order. objecting to. That's order. their problem that they have. Because if you have a look at the question, it asked, it asked about, in the end part of it, regarding Qatar's application before the decision was made. And what made them outraged, what suddenly enlivened them, was when the minister started to refer to what the situation was before the application was made. That's exactly what she was referring Order. to. She was referring to what the, pre what the situation the previous government had left in place. The question specifically invited Order. an answer about what the circumstances were before the application had been made. And if you don't want an answer about what the circumstances were before the application was made, then don't be so idiotic as to ask a question as to what the circumstances were before the application was made. We have a and the reason they've done this is really simple. Really simple. They have given up on a debate about cost of living. Completely given up. They are embarrassed. Order. Completely embarrassed about the economic accounts the that have come out leader, today. The they are embarrassed that inflation has been going down. They are embarrassed that wages Order. have been going up. And they are embarrassed about having to sit on the opposition benches seeing Order. a government deliver a surplus Order. that they were never capable the of. Member for Hume and the member and for amidst Deacon. that embarrassment, you fall back to all that's got left. Maybe Order. we can manufacture a Order. procedural argument. And how desperate were they to get to a procedural argument? Order. The desperation of the Leader of the Opposition saying, you know, uh, can you give me a ruling? Can this please be a ruling? Please give me a ruling so we can talk about something other than policy. Please give us a reason to interrupt the Minister when she is about to refer to what the situation was before that application. Because, because while it is not, while it is certainly, certainly disorderly in this place for me to call anyone a hypocrite, there is extraordinary hypocrisy in the debate. Extraordinary hypocrisy in the debate when you look at previous behaviour and what the circumstances were before that application was made. We have a Minister for Transport here who has acted in the national interest for this country. We have a Minister here. A minister here in Minister Order. King who has the made decisions the and the then the will, outrage. The Leader of the House will pause. There is far too much noise. The member for Deakin, the member for Hume is now warned. There's been continual non-stop yelling on both sides of the chamber. The Leader of the House will return back to the motion, just as I gave the Leader of the Opposition the much, same. Speaker. And, the, and the outrage the outrage that they have about the minister being in a situation in the questions that have been raised in the debate. We've had all the different questions raised in the debate. It was bizarre why we had the earlier ones in a question about relevance Order. on this one. But it, as we heard the different questions, one of them, a whole series of them actually simply went to, did a minister conduct due diligence and talk to stakeholders? Basically. I'm not surprised they are shocked that ministers do that these days. <laughs> It used to be the case that a minister wouldn't even have to talk to colleagues because the Prime Minister could just talk to a mirror and have the whole cabinet present. They were all there. Who needed stakeholders? Who needed anyone to consult with? The Prime Minister of the day could just have a quiet chat with himself and everything was OK. So amidst all that humiliation, they want to have a procedural debate. We have a fine speaker here. We have a fine speaker. A fine speaker. And I'll tell you what, I remember some of the speakers that were put up by those opposite. We all talk, we all talk in very revered tones about former Speaker Tony Smith. We very rarely talk about the others. One of them's here, one of them's long gone, 
we very rarely talk about the others. Order. We have somebody who, in the tradition of Speaker Tony Order. Smith, has abided by the traditions of this place. But the lack of respect for the traditions of this place, if it was ever on the show, it was on show Gibson. by them on Monday. It was on show by them on Monday, showing no respect for the parliament, showing Order. no respect the as they tried the to egg on public the galleries, the showing no the respect for the house any of will that. Pause. The House will come to order, so I can hear from the member for North Sydney on a point of order. Thank you, Mr Speaker. It's actually um, Standing Order 91E, Disorderly Conduct. I am very grateful to have the opportunity to listen to both major parties talk about what is appropriate standing order or not, but there are Australian public sitting in this chamber at the moment watching this behaviour, and I do not believe this behaviour is fitting of this chamber. So if we could please have this debate and have it reasonably without yelling at each other, I think that would be in the best interest for everyone. Just to ask all members for the remainder of this speech to not interject. The Leader of the House has the call. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. And in terms of the issues of respect for this place, in this debate, so I'm simply referring to what has been said in this debate, Mr Speaker, we had the Leader of the Opposition go back on an indulgence that he gave in this place only a couple of days ago, talking about what should be above politics in terms of when we engage with the rest of the world. Now, members don't have to stand up and take an indulgence. Members don't have to stand up and try to say something is above politics. But when you do, it should last longer than 48 hours. And that shows the character of this Leader of the Opposition. The Leader of the House will resume his seat for a moment, so I can hear from the Manager. Well, Mr Speaker, the uh, Leader of the House is now straying well outside the proper purpose of this debate, which is whether, the ruling, uh, whether your ruling should be upheld or not. That's what he should be addressing. The, I'm listening carefully to the Leader of the House. I'm listening to everyone, what they're saying during this debate. Trust me. But the Leader of the House is remark using his remarks of what has been said during the debate, which under the standing orders he is entitled to do. The Leader of the House has the call. And once again, Mr Speaker, thank you. Once again, Mr Speaker, even that point of order shows the contempt they have for this parliament. Even that point of order shows exactly how they used to run things and how they wish things still were, where they get to make a point and no one gets to answer it in return. And that is precisely, precisely what they are wanting to have happen here. That's the only reason that point of order could have possibly been raised. But there's some sort of outrage that a different point of view is Order. given in this parliament. Well, can I say, we are only a short way through question time, and, we, and if anything that they say is true, if anything that they say is true in this debate, it's that they want to hear more in response to their questions. So in order to Order. get on with it, and I do this rarely, but in order to get on with question time, I move that the question be put.